Today we're talking oxalates. It comes up all the time in the comments. So I'm going to do a deep dive in 90 seconds on oxalates. My name is Dominique Ludwig and I'm a nutritionist. Oxalates are compounds that are found in plants. Plants need oxalates because they act as a deterrent against being eaten by other herbivores. They form a structural part of the plant and also they're a storage mechanism in the plant as well as being antimicrobial. In effect, oxalates are organic acids that can bind to calcium. They're found in leafy greens such as chard and spinach, but also beetroot, fruits like rhubarb and berries, beans and lentils, including soy, and also seeds and nuts like almonds, cashew nuts and sesame seeds. In the body, they have antioxidant properties, but also they do bind to some of the calcium that we consume at the same time. For most people, this is unproblematic. Not everyone needs to worry about oxalates, but if you are hypersensitive or you have joint pain or kidney stones, you might be asked to reduce oxalates in your diet. Oxalates are water soluble, so when we're cooking vegetables, we naturally reduce the amount of oxalates they contain. So when oxalates bind to some of the calcium we've eaten in the gut, this is actually a good thing because calcium oxalate passes through the gut unabsorbed and passes out the other end. The problems come when we absorb the oxalates and the oxalates that have been absorbed can then form oxalate crystals in other parts of the body. So combining high oxalate foods like beetroot with a yogurt dressing is actually beneficial. So are we likely to get calcium deficiency if we eat oxalates? Not really. As long as we're eating a balanced diet, we're still going to get enough. While some of the calcium might get bound to oxalates, there's still plenty left over for our body to absorb.